Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 415 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilace, coming to you live from YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for watching. Regardless of whether you're watching the live or you're watching the recording, if you have a comment or a question, please feel free to leave it in the comment box. Um, first comment goes to Ilias Yasu, who says, hey again, never heard of this house. Good. I'm very, very happy to bring it to your attention because chances are that if you haven't heard of it, then there are some other people who haven't heard of it either. And I think it is a brand that deserves your attention. The brand is Puente. I believe it's based in Spain, um, but we'll get onto that in a moment. Um, what I was going to say, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. And we are nearly in December, folks. I think this is going to be the final video. Well, it is going to be the final video for November because tomorrow is the 30th and I know I'm not doing a video tomorrow. And it's when things start gearing up for, towards, you know, end of year lists. Um, I'm going to start thinking about what's going to make it onto my best perfumes of the year list. We've got We've got best winter perfumes coming up. I'm going to try and do as many reviews as possible between now and you know the the proper start of the holiday season. So it's going to be it's going to be a, a bit hectic. David says Eliam's perfumes are phenomenal. Um, I'm impressed too. Mostly, mostly, generally impressed. Very happy for this, says David. Um, Rachel says hello. I've not heard of it either. Fantastic. Um, What's this since my handle is a pain to say? Who's that? Hello from Julie, says JCJ. Okay, I'm going to have to try to remember that it's Julie then. Vespertine is such a beautiful tubero, says David, and Medusa is a fantastic nod to vintage style perfumery. I think we are going to be on the same page on this one. So what can I tell you about this brand? All I can tell you is that a little while ago, the, the founder and perfumer, a person called Elian Puente, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. It's the first name that I'm less sure about, got in touch and said, I'd like to send you some samples. I did my usual thing where I said, I'd be very, very happy to receive your samples, but please bear in mind, I cannot guarantee that I will write about anything that I receive and I cannot guarantee that any samples will necessarily be positive, um, any reviews will necessarily be positive, et cetera, et cetera. Four vials arrived. I think this represents um, most of the collection, not all. I think maybe there are a few that um, maybe they may maybe one wasn't out yet when the, when the samples were sent. Um, the very first one came out in 2022, and it's called Medusa. And I think we should start by smelling it. We have some pre-sprayed blotters as well. Um, Claire says, "Seem to be unable to join the chat again." But I can see your message, so something must have gone right. Um, so Medusa, very, very good name for this perfume as well, I must say. Where's Medusa? Where's Medusa? Where's Medusa? There we go. Let's have a spray of Medusa. I've worn this too. Now, this opens... David, <laughs> David, David, you're obviously really excited. Jasmine, Civet and Oak Moss, says David. It, it's a really, really good, intoxicating, properly indolic jasmine. It's nice. Um, what have I written here? I can't even read my whole uh, my own handwriting. Oh yes, but yeah, I've, that's the because because I had the idea of Medusa in my head. It does make you think of tentacles and maybe sort of like snake-like tentacles. There's something really, really quite femme fatale about it. You know, it really does feel like it belongs in some 1950s film noir. Um, something suitably threatening, dramatic, and gothic beauty about it is what I wrote in my notebook. And then I also said as well that there are shades of Andy Towers' Le Maroc pour elle, which is one of my favorite jasmines. Um, I think very boudoirish, says David. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And very, very decadent somehow. And also, it made me think, now my knowledge of Greek mythology is, is not brilliant, but Medusa, before she became Medusa, am I not right? Somebody will correct me. Am I right that actually she was a really, really beautiful woman, but then did somebody become jealous of her beauty? Was it somebody like Aphrodite? And then that's why she turned her into Medusa. So in Medusa, you've got this sense of like fallen beauty or somebody who's a victim of envy or a victim of jealousy and then becomes 
really, really angry through it. David says yes, and the, but 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 Medusa is also a really, really powerful figure because what is it? The reason why she turns people into stone is because she shows them themselves as they truly are, or something like that. It, it, it's not just pure. It's not just pure evil at play. Some somebody who knows more about this will tell me, but um, it's it is really nice. It it becomes it becomes kind of cigarette smoky ish. Oh, there we go, David. Aphrodite condemns Medusa and turns her into the hideous beast, so that no one can ever see her beauty again. Yes, but what is the reason why she turns people into stone? I think there is something about knowledge. Doesn't doesn't she give people knowledge and then that that petrifies them, literally. Um, oh, Maudlin says, a version says that Medusa was um, violated in Aphrodite's temple. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Um, but it, it, it is a beautiful scent and a really, really interesting scent. Now, we've been talking a lot about expensive perfumes. These ones aren't cheap either, but goodness me, for 50 mils, um, you can get 50 mils for below 250 pounds, so which, which at the moment feels like a bargain, but that's still that's still expensive. Um, I'm just looking on the brand's own website. You can get 12 mils for something in the region of 70 pounds, and <coughs> as I say, 50 mils for something in the region of just below 250. What do they say about uh, Medusa? Uh, the, the perfumer says the, the perfume was inspired by her story. I wanted to showcase the two sides of Medusa's life, the beauty and the monster. Medusa starts with a grand opening of gorgeous flowers, smooth Moroccan rose, opulent jasmine, seductive orange blossom represent Medusa's beauty. At its base, earthy notes of elegant orris root, deep vetiver and rich oak moss contrast the floral bouquet. Finally, a heavy dose, sorry, a hefty dose of pure civet, a sensuous animal musk with a savage edge, brings the cursed monstrous Medusa to life. Um, it's um, it, it, it's really, really beautifully done. Michael says, long time listener, first time live watcher as I settle my early rising sun in Canberra, Australia. You're very, very welcome. Good day to you. No, it's not good day. Um, very early rising sun. Actually, what time is it there? Is it, it's, it's like coming up to 5 a.m., isn't it? Um, and let's get our pre-sprayed one. So this is my pre-sprayed Medusa. Dobre vietur um, anju. You're very, very welcome. Um, yeah, it becomes it becomes dirtier, I guess, because because we've got the civet, but that indolic jasmine perfection, and it's so gorgeously vintage. You know, it makes you think. Actually, for me, it makes me think of maybe an old Dior because it's it's got it's got that real sophistication to it as well. So that's one. This year, I'm going to go with one that I already know is 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 my least favorite of this quartet. Maybe it's one that the brand felt. Um, they had to do as a kind of summary scent. And it's one called uh, Zotikos. Um, this one, this one is, I was going to say it's take it or leave it. It's actually more leave it for me. It's, 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 yeah, it's the kind of thing that I think we've, we've got enough of. Maybe, as I say, the, the, the brand felt they needed to do it. It's, it's out of stock on the website at the moment, which is interesting, considerably cheaper than the others because a hundred sorry 50 mils of this is 140 pounds this is meant to be a summery burst of citruses T to me it's not quite so convincing it's 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 a little bit sort of 80s dihydromercenol overkill the brand talks about a lively accord of juniper berry spices angelica root gin and tonic inspired i i i, I, I don't get i don't get the kind of note realism from this that I get from the other ones. And in the dry down, yeah, it a bit too much ambery wood thing going on there. So never mind. That 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 one that one is the the one that's a miss for me. But getting into more interesting territory, uh Vespertine is from this year. Nobody starts singing Bjork. Um let's have a spray of Vespertine. Um and what did I write about Vespertine? Oh, I've written, quickly becomes a very rich tuberose, creamy, coconutty, very humid and lush. Um, 
It's been a love for a good while, says David. Oh, from Vespertine. Yeah, well, if you like tuberose, I can see why you'd like this. I think I wrote in my book that beautiful though it is, it may be, I've written a touch predictable. Um, I think it's what I wanted carnal flower to be for me, says David. Now that's interesting. Okay, can you, could you say why? Could you sort of, because I was smelling this and thinking, it's really, really good, but I'm going to stick to carnal flower. But clearly it's pushed some button in you. So I wonder if we can put into words um, what it is about it. I mean, it, 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 it is beautifully done. I, I don't want to, because that sounded like sort of, you know, a bit of a criticism saying I'm going to stick to my carnal flower. Maybe for me, carnal flower, maybe I like the fact that carnal flower becomes a bit muskier and projects more. Um, uh, the brand says about this one, creamy and voluptuous tuberose, absolute is supported by jasmine, ylang ylang and orange blossom. Yeah, tons of white florals here. Elegant and sophisticated narcissus accents the bouquet at its base, sandalwood and soft amber notes, frolic with cashmiran, a velvety white musk. Maybe, maybe, I mean, I really like cashmiran, but maybe, but not overdone. Maybe it's the cashmiran that switches me off. David, okay, David says, Vespertine smells more sensible to me than carnal flower. I feel that carnal flower has a loudness that is maybe too much, whereas Vespertine sticks to what modern people call silent love. Well, then that would, you know, that figures because I like my sense to be a little bit louder. Maybe, maybe that is what it's actually about. So if somebody thinks, gosh, their carnal flower is a little bit too carnal, um, they might want to go for this. But it's extremely well done. It's not like fracar, okay? So it's not it's not an angry tuberose. Voluptuous, I think, is a very good word, the word that the brand used. used. It is It is curvaceous and voluptuous and sensual rather than aggressive. So, you know, this is not fracar, poison, um, it's it's tender. There is there is something delicate about it. And sensible, yeah, I, I kind of like the word sensible. And where's the pre-sprayed Vespertine? Vespertine, here we go. Mm. What's its base meant to be? Sandalwood, vetiver, amber. I mean, I, I personally, I would not have picked out cashmeran. But if they're actually saying that it's there, then it must be there. And less tuberosy and more woody in the base, but really, really nicely done. And <clears throat> we're saving my favorite for last. Um, the, 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 the final one is Iris Du. So soft, is it soft iris or um, sweet iris? Uh, I, think, I think the dry down of this is one of the most beautiful dry downs I've smelt for a long time. Um, let's have a spray. And, and I will just, while that is just doing its thing, I will just go on the website to see. So yes, this is another one of the ones that's 228 pounds for 50 mils. What did I write about this? I've written, not a carroty iris at the top, more citrus, a sense of cold dew on petals. Um, oh, this, is, this is really lovely. Um, It's really, really interesting. It makes me think of so many things um, without particularly name checking. It, it makes me think of, you know, when Grossmith was um, reissued and that trio that they came back with was so beautiful and so rich. Okay, they were kind of retro and maybe sort of some people thought they were a bit too old school. Um, but things like Fulnana, from Grossmith, which were just so lavish and almost Baroque. Th th this has got that feel to it. And it's an iris that doesn't do the obvious thing that a lot of irises, other irises do. So it's it's not iris silver mist. Um, it, if, if anything, it's like a less tragic, quieter, sweeter, gentler um, après l'onde from Garlin. Um, I still have a travel of Iris Du, says David. What do you think of that one? Oh, I wanted to love Iris Du as much as Vespertine, but I think I prefer Bruma by Trudon. Interesting. How does it achieve being Baroque when it's so iris-centered? Good question. Let's see what the brand says. Iris root, one of the most revered and lush, luxurious essences in perfumery, is adorned with sweet and creamy notes of superior grade ylang-ylang from the Camoros, 
Okay, so white florals, mimosa, and a tropical frangipani absolute. That's it. That's it. I remember now. Because I remember thinking it's like iris with almond and gera geranium. And I've actually, there you go. I've put down here. I remember what I was thinking now. It's like, it's like somebody's taken one of the soft, um, the, you know, amaretti biscuits, you can get them as like hard ones or soft ones. And the soft ones are called morbidi, right? It's like somebody's taken um, one of those and soaked it in iris. And so does that mean that it's a kind of heading into gourmand territory, iris? It is beautiful, whatever it is. Anyway, the brand goes on to say the accord is brightened with essence of geranium laced with a touch of jasmine and warmed with comforting notes of sandalwood, cedar, tonka bean, and vanilla. Very, very definitely vanilla in the base. Um, and the dry down, I love the dry down. This one I am tempted to, to um, kind of put it out there that maybe I'd like it for Christmas. 68 pounds for 12 mils. See, I could do that and 12 mils would probably see me through for a long time. Um, yeah, the dry down. The dry down is convincingly sandalwoody, convincingly vanillic, and convincingly irisy. It's very, it's kind of intelligently comforting. Because I guess the cerebral, colder mind of the iris comes through, and yet it's softened and made human by this really, really lush, beautiful base. It's, it's, um, it's, it's nice work. It's really nice work. David says, it is lovely. I wish it had a chocolate cocoa dust dry down. Interesting. You don't ask for much, David, do you? Okay. Friendly librarian vibe, says Eco Jock. Well, more than just friendly, though. More than friendly. More than friendly. Librarian, yes, but more than friendly. Okay. We are done. Thank you very much for watching, folks. If, if, if you are able to get some sort of a discovery set or get some sample vials, um, genuinely, exciting new brand discovery for me. So congratulations, Signor Puente, for founding this. I will very much look forward to seeing what you release in future. Um, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned to social media for details of more videos coming your way soon. And until then, be good. Take care. Bye now.